So it's official. The Atlanta Falcons are bad. They are, they're not good. I just want to say that. The Atlanta Falcons are not good. And there are a lot of things that need to be fixed from the offense to the defense to things that happen on Sunday against the Washington football team, a game in which I predicted the Atlanta Falcons to win. But of course, before I get right into this little rant, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on that notification bell, help me out a little bit. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now, the Atlanta Falcons are, they look terrible. I mean, their offense looked really, really good. They did score 30 points, but the defense was a whole nother story. Now, getting into it, Atlanta lost to the Washington football team 34-30 to on Sunday, which, uh, as of the recording of this video, was yesterday. Man, it was it was tough to watch, to be honest. Now, you would like to be proud of Atlanta on offense, but then you would remember that the Washington football team literally have the fourth worst defense in the league. Like, Come on. The Atlanta Falcons offense, while it's impressive that they scored 30 points, the Washington football team's defense is terrible. And really, I don't know what you put that on. I like, do you put that on the Washington football team's defense or how good Atlanta's offense is doing or how good specifically Cordell Patterson did? I don't know what you would blame that on. However, it's important to mark up that the Washington football team's defense is not good. So it's not like we scored 30 points on a very formidable opponent, if you would. Now, of course, we have to go down to Matt Ryan. You guys have heard my rants about Matt Ryan. You've heard that I believe he doesn't fit in the offense, which I kind of don't believe anymore. He did have a great game, actually had a gem of a game, 25 for 42, 283 yards and four touchdowns. Matt Ryan had a really good game. I mean, there's no other way you can possibly put it. Matt Ryan, uh, for what I said, the comments uh, previously, partially, I still do believe him a little bit. I just don't know if Matt Ryan is going to fit in the offense for the long term, and I do eventually think he's He's either going to get released or traded away. However, this was a good game for Matt Ryan. Now, a guy we need to talk about is Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson is an offensive lethal weapon. The guy was a beast on Sunday. 100 plus total yards. I believe he had something around 114, 15-ish range and three touchdowns, all of which came in the air. Man, Cordell Patterson was an absolute fanatic on Sunday. The guy has emerged as a top offensive weapon for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, of course, the Falcons Falcons need to use their wide receiver and tight end more. And by this, I mean Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts. Now, Calvin Ridley actually sort of redeemed himself last Sunday, this game. Man, he had 80 yards, which is somewhat promising. I mean, of course, you would expect more from your number one wide receiver. However, 80 yards, considering that Calvin Ridley has started off the season kind of slow, it's actually pretty good that Ridley got 80 yards. Now, of course, Atlanta still does not know how to use Kyle Pitts. They don't know where to use him. They don't know when to use him. And that's clear a huge problem because when you have a 6-6 to 6-7 tight end that runs a 4-4 speed, you would want to know how to use him. The Atlanta Falcons just haven't figured that out. Now, you have to acknowledge that he is getting a fair increase in targets. He got nine targets on Sunday, which was really, really good. I'm really glad that Kyle Pitts is getting more targets because, quite honestly, I feel like he deserves to be one of the most targeted tight ends in the league, not only because of how much he can possibly produce, but just because of his measurables. When you have somebody that's 6-6 and that athletic, it's hard to not throw him the ball. And Kyle Pitts, I believe he will eventually get open. I believe the Atlanta offense will find their flow with him. However, it's it's a long process as of right now. The Atlanta offense still has a lot to figure out clearly. And while they did put up 30 points against the first, uh, excuse me, the fourth worst defense in the league, yeah, that's that's definitely going to need to be fixed. There's still a lot of stuff to do. Now, going on to Atlanta's defense. Lord, where do I start here? Atlanta, man, they looked absolutely terrible. In the last four minutes of the game, the Atlanta Falcons were up 30 to 28. Four minutes, the Atlanta Falcons were up 30-28, and they still managed to lose the game thanks to a very poor defensive effort that day on Sunday. Now, the Washington football team was a top-10 offense heading into this game, so you have to give them their credit as well. You cannot blame all this on the Atlanta defense. However, if you let a team come into your home and score 30-plus points and beat you when you were up with four minutes left to go, that's something that the defense that's something that the defense has to figure out, simply. Now, of course, the defense also could not figure out how to contain Tyler Heineke and some of his receivers. Tyler Heineke himself went 23 for 33 for 290 yards and three touchdowns. While he's not the world's best quarterback, I do give him credit. I respect him. He has uh, gone through his fair share of NFL, let's just say ditches, if you would. 
he has gone through a fair share of teams, and it's good to see him finally, um, let's just say, reviving his career up in Washington. Now, of course, Terry McLaurin had a gem of a game. The guy had six receptions for 123 yards and two touchdowns. Again, Atlanta's defensive backs, they, they just have nothing to do. Like, they can't do anything about those wide receivers, and that's not all on them. Of course, the D-line is not that good. However, man, Atlanta's defensive backfield is going to have to get a lot better if they plan on contending in the next couple of years. Now, of course, it's important to recognize that the Washington football team's offense also, on top of passing for almost 300 yards, also ran for another 122 yards. The Washington football team also scored 34 points, in which Atlanta's defense allowed a whopping 21 points in the second half alone. Man, the Atlanta Falcons defense needs some work, and they were only able to put up one sack overall. They played pretty dreadful throughout the whole game. Now, for the Atlanta Falcons as a whole, the offense has looked better over the past couple of weeks. In my opinion, the offense has never been bad. However, I just don't know if they're going to mesh together. I would really like to see Kyle Pitts get a lot more production in this Atlanta offense. Of course, I also want to see Calvin Ridley get a little bit better. I feel like he is kind of shaky in the last couple of weeks, of course, as I said previously in this video. Now for the defense, the Atlanta Falcons defense straight up has to get better. This defense is in need of quite possibly everything. And if the, and in my opinion, which is a really high chance, if the Atlanta Falcons get a high overall draft pick, I do think they need to go with a defensive player, whether that be in the defensive backfield or the defensive line, two of the biggest weaknesses for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, of course, getting a little bit into the Washington football team, I think they did have a great performance. I really do think they are a playoff contender when their defense is playing good because let's just face it, it's really unusual for the Washington football team to be one of the worst defenses in the NFL, especially considering they were one of the best defenses in the NFL just last season. However, Chase Young is off to a rough start this year. Jonathan Allen has not been able to get too loose either, so I'm not really surprised. However, the Washington football team's defense usually performs better, and I do think they will get to that eventually this season. However, I still do have the Cowboys winning that division. I think the Cowboys are a very underrated team. However, getting back into the topic, that's going to be it for this video. i be I believe the Atlanta Falcons are a good team. I just think they need they need a lot of fixing. And, of course, with a new head coach and a lot of new players and a, pretty much a whole new staff of coordinators, that is going to be something that's going to be involved. There's going to be some change. And I do feel like the Atlanta Falcons are going to do that within these next couple of weeks. However, thank you for watching. On the other side of the screen, you guys make sure to stay loved, stay blessed. And without further ado, I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching.